All right, we're going to take some uh, pencil thumbnails and turn them into something that's a little more legible, and that'll look something like that. So let's go through the process here. This is a scan, um, and it's a little wishy-washy. So what I'm going to do to begin with is to change the levels of that. Shortcut for that can be Command-L. And here we have the black point, which is this grayish, dark gray slider here. And as I drag it up, you can see that my what was light grays are becoming darker. We're just forcing those to go black. Uh, if we start to introduce a little uh, schmutz that we don't want, we might look at the midpoint. That's that gray slider. And I don't have any in this, but if you have some pollution from the paper itself, this will start to take some of that out. So maybe I'm just going to find something that gets the majority of my lines looking pretty good. I'm going to say something like that to which we can say OK. And now that's a change. If we want to use another tool, we can use the l curves, which is Command M. And this puts, um, it's the same exact thing where this is our darks slider that comes on in. This is our lights slider. And we also, in the mid-tones, have uh, the advantage of this tool, which is the curve itself, which can get a lot more specific about that midpoint when it's a soft falling off. So you might find that that works better for you. Uh, the third of those would be brightness contrast. I think the shortcut for that is uh, shift command. No, I don't use that one very much because I find that it's a little too simple. Uh, but you could just crank the contrast and lower the brightness and you might you might like that but you can see it's introducing for me quite a bit of uh, it's coming in rather sloppy so I don't, I don't use that one too much I'm gonna go back to my curves which is good for the detail -y stuff levels for me is fine if you want to just knock something out quick so that's looking better uh, with my E for erase tool up I'm gonna take out my sloppy lines here and to make a straight line like this I'm clicking once holding down the shift key and clicking again and that's creating a like holding down a ruler and just snapping those so that's going real quick and um, you don't need to take the lines out but uh, in my case it's giving it a sort of lack of polish that would be kind of nice you can also take out any other artifacts that you have now I'm gonna make a new layer which is going to be over here pop and then I'm going to set my M for marquee tool to be a fixed ratio of whatever ratio we're shooting our show in so I'm going to put in 16 by 9 for us and as you click and drag that out it's going to force it to be in a 16 by 9 shape advantage here is I could uh, pick that up and kind of move it around and maybe reframe it think a little bit more seriously about my composition uh, this is looking a little like it's on the leading edge there, so maybe I'll give them some lead room, something like that. Okay, if I like that and my colors are set to the default black and white, D will set it to default black and white, uh, I can then go to Edit and Stroke, and that's going to give me, depending on the size of my, the resolution of my original scan, a uh, thicker or thinner line. Because I did it on another layer, I can continue to reframe this until I'm satisfied with the placement. I'm going to go right there. And um, can continue to do that for each of the pictures. So maybe I'll uh, reframe that one a little bit. Um, I'm using the arrow tools to kind of move that around to where I want it. Let's say it's right there. And once again, edit stroke. There's no shortcut for that guy, unfortunately. And uh, one more over here, M for marquee. And that one is going off my page a little bit, but I'll just do it right there. It's okay if it comes out the uh, frame a little bit. Okay, I'm going to make yet, and notice there are different scales, uh, different sizes. Uh, that's okay. I think as long as the frame is indicated, you're in good shape there. I will make one more layer so that I can come in and start to do some shading. I will rely strictly on the grays. And I'm going to kind of limit myself in the same way one might if one had uh, a handful of markers. 
So like I might say uh, like a 20%, a 40%, and a 80% or something and do my values exclusively in that. Uh, not forgetting that we can do white here too. So uh, let's give everybody our 40%-ish thing. I'm going to fill that color. If it's in the foreground, I can hit the keys Option and Delete, and that'll fill it. Uh, some of you might be used to going over to the bucket tool to tr um, fill, uh, but that's a shortcut that will save you a lot of time. And if it's in the background of our choices, in this case white, I would hit Command Delete. So it's Option Delete for the foreground, Command Delete for the background. Now right now it seems as though I've covered up my entire um, picture, which I have. I'm going to just fill the rest of these in. So I have my base shading in. Oops, that uh, somehow lost my color choice there. Let's do that again. Okay, um, what I will do on this layer is set it to multiply. And now I can see my shading on top of that. So maybe I'll come in with the brush tool, B for brush, and just kind of start adding in some things that might need some lightening up uh, and some things that might need some darkening up. So I don't know, maybe the figure there. And if you make a mistake, just uh, bring up your brush tool. And I'm not using a tablet or anything, so it's a little floppy. Back over on my B, B for brush. Get these guys filled in quick. Actually, I'm thinking, you know, on second thought, Let's go with a slightly lighter gray for those guys so that they seem like they're maybe a little farther away. Just getting a little indication. And then I can make the real foreground stuff, which would be this building, even darker. Again, shift, shift click to fill that. And if I want to just take some of that out, bring up the erase tool, shift and click again. Just kind of neaten things up. So uh, back over on this guy. Let's tune up the car to be a little bit more. Eh, that's pretty light. Let's go one, one or two darker there. And it's okay if I a few extra strokes there. As long as I can tell what it is. Maybe I want to give the windshield a little clean up here. Fork. Get up my digital squeegee a bit here. Alright. So maybe you know, we've indicated that okay with a couple of quickish strokes uh, and so on. And then now we have something that if you merged it down, uh, it might be a little bit easier to read than uh, it's unscanned, uncleaned up counterparts. You can see in my original version here, I did them a little crispier line. So you can kind of see whichever one you like. Uh, to merge them on down, you can hit the shortcut of Shift Command E. And now those are ready to save as a JPEG or something. I like to save a work file. So if I want to go back and redo the color or the shading, I guess you should say, uh, then I don't have to lose that, lose those layers. And it's a little hard to work with when they are not there anymore.